Configuring the EGX350 for non-nose cone engraving. The first thing we want to do is on the handy panel, want to press the menu key until we see the home view Z1, Z0, Z2. Want to arrow over to view and press enter. This will move the machine to the view position. Go ahead and set down the handy panel and open the front cover and we'll go ahead and prepare our AS10 adhesive sheet for installation. We'll go ahead and take our AS10 and place it to the lower left corner of our table. This is where we'll set our XY origin as well as our material. Next we want to take our engraving stock and place it to the lower left corner of our table on top of the AS10 sheet. You want to get it nice and straight and then push down on it so it adheres to the AS10 properly. We'll go ahead and close the top cover and on the handy panel we want to press the menu key until we see the home view menu. Make sure home is selected and press the enter key to move the machine to the lower left hand corner. Next we'll go ahead and open the cover and we're going to go ahead and lower our Z axis so we can set our Z0 position as well as our tooling. So we'll go ahead and lower the Z axis about an eighth inch or so above the material. You want to make sure the material is to the far left corner and press the XY origin set button and then hit enter to set your home position. Next, we'll use our arrow keys to move the carriage over the material. Once we have the carriage over the material, we want to go ahead and press the menu key until we get to the I.O. and Others menu. Under the Others menu, we want to make, revol make sure Revolution is turned on and Auto Z Control is turned off. The display will say set lock lever to number three. The lock lever is located on the right side of the spindle. You want to push it in and then up. If you grab the spindle assembly and move it up and down, it should not move. We can then press our menu button until we get back to our default menu. Next, we'll take our engraving cutter and we'll load it in from the top of the brass cutter holder. We'll drop it in until the tool touches the material as you see here. Once it touches the material you want to go ahead and lock it down using the supplied hex wrench. Next on the handy panel we want to go ahead and press the Z origin set button. The display will read set Z1, Z0, Z2. You want to make sure Z0 is selected and press the enter key. Once we've done that we'll go ahead and press the Z plus key to bring the tool off the material. We'll arrow over to Z2 and press the enter key to set our clearance. Then we can press the menu key to come back to the default menu. Once the EGX350 is configured for non-nose cone engraving, we will set up Engrave Studio to engrave and cut out our design. For this project, we will use 8 by 6 inch 2-ply engraving stock. So first thing we want to do is go ahead and launch Engrave Studio. Once we launch Engrave Studio, under Machines we want to make sure that we have the EGX350 selected and create a new file. When we create the new file we want to go ahead and set our width, our height, as well as our material thickness. We also want to set our XY origin position to the lower left 
corner. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. We'll go ahead and import a vector file, in this case a logo. We can then select the logo and center the logo on our material. We can click on the scale tool, grab one of the corners, and we can resize the graphic as we see fit. As you can see here, I held down the shift key and it kept the file proportional as I resized it. Next, I'm going to create an oval to go around my graphic and this is going to be the oval that I'm going to uh, cut out. So I'll create it. Again, I'll use the Align Vector to center it on my material, and you notice it centers it directly uh, over the, the graphic. Again, I can grab the corners, and I can resize it to my liking. Once I'm done, we'll go ahead and get ready to apply a toolpath. To do this, we'll click on the Toolpath tab, and on the Toolpath tab, there's a little thumbnail. You want to click that to tack it to the screen. We'll go to the Setup Material icon and we'll set our Rapid Clearance Gap. This is our Z2 setting. So we'll set it for 8th inch, 0.125, and click OK. Under the Quick Engraving Tool Pass, this is going to be the area you're going to use the most. We'll select our engraving cutter. In this case, we're using a 0.01 cutter which is bundled with the EGX 350. We'll go ahead and set our parameters. For the pass depth, we can set it for 0 0.03. For the step over, you'd want it to be half the tool size, so 5 thousandths of an inch. For the feed rate, we want to click the drop down key and select millimeter per second. And we can set the feed rate and our plunge rate accordingly you'd want to click apply and click OK. Now for our text, our graphic, we're going to set our engraving depth and we're going to set this for 0 .007 inches. We're going to do a fill and we're going to do a hatch fill you can set an angle for the hatch fill if you like. In this case, we'll go with 135 degree. You can give your toolpath a name. In this case, we'll call it fill. And then calculate the toolpath. When you calculate it, you'll notice that the graphic itself fills and you can actually see the toolpath on your screen. Next we're going to create our toolpath uh, for the outer line. This is going to be the line that we're going to cut out. So we'll go ahead and select the outer line and we're going to use the same tool. For the depth and pressure however we're going to change our depth to the thickness of the material. In this case we're going to go 0.66. Our material is 0.64 so this will ensure that we cut all the way through. We're going to do this as an outline so we're cutting directly on the line. We'll give this toolpath a name and then we'll click on calculate. At this point, you're going to get a warning telling you the tool will cut through the material. This is OK. We will go ahead and click OK. Now we have our tool path for our cutout.
Next, we'll click on Close. We'll go ahead and put a check mark on the fill and our cutout, and we'll click on the Save Toolpath icon. At this point, we will put a check box on Output All Visible Toolpaths to one file. Once we have this set, We'll verify that the post processor shows EGX350, and then we can click on Output Toolpaths to output our job. And this concludes the engraving portion.